What's up, guys? Christopher Manly Matches is recording. It is. So, part two of Whiteboard Wednesday. This is where we're actually going to bring in the whiteboard. So, we're going to be talking about how the geometry and the concavity of a shaft, what they have to do with increasing a, a shaft's structural integrity. So, the majority of, you know, the original lacrosse sticks had your stereotypical, even-angled, kind of sharp-cut geometry. So, you can see here that the cross-section, there are just straight lines. This is just a ripwood shaft, obviously. It's, it's solid, but, you know, this is what your stereotypical alloy shaft looks like. And the reason that is, is because it's very easy to extrude when they're making these metal shafts. So, how you make a metal shaft is, I don't quite understand it, but you're essentially like pulling the metal out in some shape, weird stuff. But this is a very easy one to do when you're making a metal shaft, which is why they moved to the octagonal shapes to begin with. What the issue though is that that's not a very structurally sound shape and it can actually lower a, a shaft strength to weight ratio just because of the shape and the geometry of it alone. What has a much more structurally sound geometry is a shaft like this beautiful Project G shaft, which has a little bit more of what people would call an ex extreme concave look is typically the, the epic way of how they describe it. You know, it's, it's what the Wonder Boy has used, it's what the Gate Iced used. It's a very um, kind of niche shape that not a lot of people like, but I'm going to try to explain to you why it increases the strength so much. Obviously, we've all seen arches, and at least to a degree, a degree we understand that arches work. They hold things up better. The issue is, is with this, it's concave, not convex. So, whereas we're used to seeing an arch like this with the load on top, so we're used to seeing arches like this with a big old weight on top with the force going down. What we're talking about here is a shape that's actually concave. So we're looking at, this is going to be a terrible drawing. Well, I can't draw, but we're looking at one that's actually concave. So the first thing the easiest example in order to explain this is still talking in terms of arches and there's a special type of arch that was really popular in gothic architecture that's called an OG arch. Not OG as in original gangster arch, but as in O-G-E-E -E arch, an OG arch. I didn't even realize the whole OG thing until I started this video. but. So what this arch looks like is actually an S. So it's going up, going to curve in an S, and then come to a point and come back down. And you guys can probably already think of some, some architectural things. You know, a lot of the Moors uh, use stuff like this. And like I said, with Gothic arch architecture, it became even more popular. But this is the OG arch. Now, what arches do are they convert stress that would normally be tensile stress into compressive stress. So what that means is a tensile stress is something where if you imagine you had a rope and you were to string it out like this, this is tensile stress. So if you are anchoring something, say an iron an iron rod across a gap. In order to keep it there, you would have to be pulling from each side to keep it straight. Now this is really tough because if you have something perfectly even, gravity is pushing down in the middle and a very small amount of weight can really add a lot of force to the strength. Imagine trying to hold you and a partner pull on a rope as somebody stood in the middle of it. It would, it would suck you right in, right? So it takes a lot of strength in the horizontal axis to be able to do that. So what they wanted to do is still elevate these structures without requiring a lot of tensile strength pulling on the sides. So they invented the arch way back when. The Romans did some good stuff with it. Um, 
And what that does is that allows the force to be redistributed as a compressive force. So instead of having to pull on each side, it redistributes the force down into the ground, kind of like a lightning rod of force, so that the, the building can stay more strong. So if we blow it up here, what we're looking at is now, instead of the forces being required on each side, if we have a line here, instead of the forces required on each side with one force down in the middle, what it's actually going to look like is one big old arch. And now instead of having forces pulling out on the side, all of these forces of the weight up here are being distributed down into the ground. So the only thing that needs to be nice and big and bulky is this big bottom part that's keeping everything up. So it's a very structurally sound shape. Where the OG arch comes in is it's not going to build the tallest bridges in the world, but it is arch strength. No, you're all good. What's up? I said, hey, interrupt your filming. No, you're all good. Uh, just picking up a uh, stick to, to... You guys have this one, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yep. That would be it. Super. Yeah, that's... Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank did, you. Did you get the... Uh... Yeah, you did. Thank you. Yeah, no, no worries. Yeah. yeah, so it has, they all have lifetime tune-ups, so if any of the strings break, just bring it right back in. Cool. Um, and then you should be good to go. That's awesome. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. Have a good one. Have a good one. Still going? Okay. So, sorry about that. So the OG arch, what it does is it might not be the strongest structure in the world, but it still is converting these tensile strengths into compressive forces. So that if you were to put a weight up top here, it wouldn't require people pulling from each side to keep this building up. It's going to convert these forces down and distribute them down into the ground to, to just better support the whole system as a whole. So where this relates is the key, the key shape here is this S-like structure that we're seeing. And so there's something called a reverse OG as well, which looks more like that. And the key though is this S shape that is allowing you to redistribute the forces from being tensile forces into compressive forces. So when we start thinking about this, looking in terms of a shaft's geometry, we will notice that these straight lines remind us a lot of the example where there are two columns and one singular rod going across. So if a check lands on this system, or if we want to make it a more specific lacrosse analogy, we have a system like this, and now you can start to imagine that being a shaft. What's bearing the brunt of all of this force are these points here, okay? So it's very hard for this specific joint to withstand a full check or whatever it may be because there's no structural integrity to that shape. And all of that force is being exerted in a tensile force. That's why you get dents in shafts like this. That's why you get bends because it can't, can't translate that force to other areas of the shaft. Now, if I erase the board really quickly, what we're gonna see is that on a shaft with a more concave profile, such as this. Now we're looking at something that looks a little bit more like this. So if I'm really zooming in on what this, oops, I'm like almost drawing this well. So if that is, whoo, I nailed that one. I'm sorry, I've never drawn anything well before. So if that is like this angle here, what we're recognizing is now 
these are those S shapes that we saw in the OG arch. And what this does is now, if we have a force exerted on this system and on this shape, so we have a weight, say this is another shaft, forcing down here. We have two points of contact here. And those forces, instead of being applied straight down, are being angled these ways by the S's. And the force on this half is now being distributed into other parts of the shaft. So instead of that one check applying on two specific points, what it's doing is that force is still only meeting the shaft at two points, but it's being distributed both into the first concave section and outward into the entire rest of the shaft. So what that means is just by changing the concavity without changing the materials at all, you can actually greatly increase a, a shaft structural integrity by just changing the concavity of it. And this is something that you saw the other day in East Coast Eye's Instagram post about how they changed the shape of their carbons. This is something they've been looking into as well. But it's just a much more sound shape because it redistributes the force of a check into a larger amount of material in the shaft. So, in order to really maximize the strength of a shaft, this light at 5.1 ounces, making it the lightest carbon fiber shaft on the market that is commercially available to you guys, and also one of the lightest, previous to this, the lightest alloy shaft on the market commercially available to you all was 4.7 ounces. So this is a 5.1 ounce shaft. The gate ice was 4.7 ounces yet it is four times stronger due to the materials and due to the shape that it possesses. Not to mention, I'm a huge fan of the shape because it allows your fingers to grip the shaft a little bit better, but hopefully this did a good job of explaining some of the redistribution of the forces as to why this is such a strong shaft. And as I was talking about with the two point forces here with this shaft, you can see I smacked it against the wall a few times and you can see how there were two points of contact with the shaft, but there is no issue with the shape of the shaft, anything else, because that force was properly redistributed throughout the shaft. So that's your physics lesson for today. Let me know if you guys have any more questions. I'll try to address them in the comments down below. Thanks so much. Looking forward to doing more Whiteboard Wednesdays. Make sure you guys keep an eye out for more information on this project you release. We and Universal Lacrosse are going to be selling a few the guys from Universal Lacrosse are hooking us up big time. So make sure you guys shoot them a follow on Instagram at Universal Lax. Make sure you check them out as well. It's all good stuff here. A lot of positive stuff and a product that is hopefully going to be a very good example for the rest of the market as to, you know, a, a really sound, engin soundly engineered shaft. So thank you guys so much. Like, subscribe. You know the rest. Follow us on Instagram at Mainly Mesh, and we'll catch you guys next time.